Welcome back. Hope you all are doing well. In this video, let's start off with adding a text label to indicate what the active item is. So let's go to the hotbar scene and let's add a label right on top of the hotbar to indicate the active item. And we can simply do this by just clicking on hotbar and adding a label node. And let's rename this to be active item label. And I'll just add sample text here. Let me zoom out. Let's drag that on top of our hotbar. And let's now add our font file to this text so we don't use the default font. And under custom fonts, let's create a new dynamic font. Click on that and then open up the font tab and let's drag in the font file to the font data field. And now we have the new font applied. Let's also add an outline to this. So it's under settings and we'll make the outline size one and also make the outline color black. All right, that looks good. Now we wanna be able to update this label during game runtime. And we can do that through code. And a good place to do that is in the hotbar script. So in the hotbar script, we wanna reuse this active item updated signal to update the label. So let's copy this line of code. And instead of refresh style, let's call a function called update active item label. And we would have to implement this function. And also this function, we'll define it within this script itself. So instead of calling it on the slot, we'll call it on self. And now let's implement this function. Update active item label. So let's first get the slot and we can do that through slots and passing in the index. And the index we want to pass in is the active item index. And we can get that through player inventory, the global script. And we can do player inventory dot active item slot. And first let's do a check to make sure that there is an item. So if it's not null, that means there is an item in this slot. And in that way, we can use the item name. So active item label dot text. And let's get the item name. Dot item and then dot item name. Else, this means that there is no item in the slot. So we'll just set the active item label the text for it to be empty. Oh, and I have to define active item label. So let's do that at the top of the script. And we'll make an on ready var active item label. Let's get access to that node. Let's call the update function in the ready function as well. And let's also call it whenever we left click on a hotbar slot. So we'll call the update function and we'll put it under slot GUI input. And if the button is button left, so we'll just put it under this if statement and we'll call it once there. And now let's try to play this and check out our new functionality. Great. So if our active item is a sword, we will see iron sword, which is cool and slime potion. And if we take out the slime potion from the slot, it'll set the string to be null or empty. And if we take the sword and we left click it back in to the active item slot, it'll show iron sword. So this looks like it's working. Now let's close out of this. Now let's start working on our equip slots. But before that, let's update our JSON file to have more items. So let's go to our data folder and open it in file manager. And then item data.json, let's edit this. And let's first include a shirt item. Copy and paste that. And I'll call this brown shirt. And the item category for this will be just shirt. I'll remove item speed and item attack. And then I'll rename the description to be a brown shirt. Let's copy this and let's create blue jeans. 
category for this can be pants, blue jeans, brown boots, and this can be under category shoes. Some dirty boots. Remove the last comma and let's save that. Okay, so we updated the JSON file. Great. Now let's open up the inventory scene and let's add a new set of slots. So let's first add a grid container and let's rename this to be equip slots. Within this grid container, let's add some panels and they'll act as our slots. And we will call the first one shirt slot. And then within the shirt slot, let's update the rect and then the min size to be 18 by 18, like what we did for our other slots. And also for custom styles, we'll just create a new style box texture. And then let's add this image to there. Okay. And now for the grid container, let's drag it into place. And we want two more slots. Pants slot and shoes slot. And I'll leave it like this. That looks fine. Now let's also add some overlays to indicate what type of slot it is. So within shirt slot, let's add a texture rect. And I have new images added and I have an image called shirt overlay. And I'll add that to a texture rect. And if you zoom in, it's kind of not centered. So to fix that, I would actually have to change the position to be one one and now it's centered. And I'll do the same thing for the other slots. Let me just shrink this texture rect. Add a texture rec for the pants slot. Change the position to be one, one. Then within the shoe slot, add a texture rec. And change the position to be one, one. All right, great. Now visually, uh, looks like we have equip slots, but we still have to add some functionality to it. Let's add the slot script to the equip slots. So let's select shirt slot, pants slot, and shoe slot. So I'm holding control and then clicking the, the nodes that I want to select. Then let's find the slot script here. And let's drag it into the script field. And now the script is applied to these equip slots. So let's open up the script. And then within our enum slot type, let's add some more slot types. So the first one we had is shirt, pants, and shoes. Now let's go into our inventory script so we can initialize the equip slots on load up. Inventory.gd. And let's get access to the equip slots here. On ready, on ready bar, equip underscore slots, and we named them equip slots. I'll create a new for loop here for i in range of equip slots dot size. And we're essentially going to be doing the same thing here. So let's copy these two lines. But instead of slots, it would be equip slots. And we also have to set the slot type. So since they vary, I'm not going to put it in the for loop. And I'll just define it out here. Equip slots at zero is shirt, pants, and shoes. And I'll update these. And I'll also call an initialize equips function. And I'll be this similar to the initialize inventory. Okay. 
and I'll use equip slots instead. And now instead of inventory, we have to access equips. So we have to create this dictionary within the player inventory script. Equip slots, and then equips, and equips. Great, that's all for now in this script. Let's now go to the player inventory script. And let's create a new dictionary called equips. Let's load some sample items in here as well. So let's copy and paste it right here. And instead of iron sword, let's load in our brown shirt, our blue jeans, and brown boots. And this should have item quantity of one. Let's scroll down and update the helper functions that we have. So the helper functions that I'm talking about is remove item, add item to empty slot, and add item quantity. And as you notice, we have some logic to do an if case if it's a hotbar or if it's inventory. And now that I'm looking at it, we store the slot type within the slot. So we actually don't need this flag is hotbar anymore. So let me get rid of this. And we can do slot dot slot type equals equals slot class dot slot type dot hotbar instead. And then we can do else if instead of hotbar, it'll be inventory here. And rather than an if else, it's actually cleaner to do a match statement instead. So match would be like this, slot type, and then we match the cases. And then underscore means everything else. So shirt, pants, and boots. And then we can do equips dot erase slot dot underscore index. And we can erase this. So let's copy this. Paste it here. And let's update this to be inventory. And this should be equips. And delete that. And also don't forget to remove the is hotbar parameter. So we're not using it anymore. One last time. Inventory and equips. Great. And also the is hotbar parameter. So the is hotbar parameter is being passed in by the hotbar script. So let's go and fix that quickly. So control alt O and then go to hotbar. We should get some errors. And all we have to do is remove that parameter. Great, all fixed. All right, let's try playing this. Well, we got an error. It says uh, non-existent function size in base grid container. Equip slots dot size. Oh, it's because right here we have to do dot get children. So we can get the slots in array form. And that way we can do dot size. All right, let's try playing that again. All right, that works. And yeah, so we can see the equip slots on load up, the shirt, the pants, and the boots. We're able to click it, and the state is stored when we transfer it to the inventory slots. Let's try to transfer it back, and it's still stored. Let's try to transfer it to the hotbar. Great, but there's one problem. So if I try to put my shirt on the shoe slot, I can now have a shirt for my shoes. 
which obviously we don't want. So we need to do some sort of checking to prevent certain item categories to go into certain slots. So let's do that. Let me close this. To add that logic, let's first go to the inventory script because that's where our equip slots are. And for every left click, we need to do some sort of check. So left click empty slot, left click different item, left click same item, and left click not holding. So we don't have to do it on left click not holding because we have no item holding. But for these helper functions, we first need to check if we're able to put into slot. And if we are, then we can go ahead and do the logic. So let's first implement this helper function func able to put into slot. Let's first get the holding item. So let's call it holding item. And we can get it by just copying this finding parent user interface dot holding item. And let's first check if the holding item is null. If it is, then we can just return true and not care anymore. If not, then let's get the holding item category. So let's call it holding item category. And to get this, we have to go to our JSON data. So JSON data, remember we made this an auto load script so we can access it in this script. JSON data dot item underscore data. And we have to pass in the item name. So holding item dot item name. And then we have to get the item category. Then we just pass in the string item category. Now that we have the item category, let's check it against the slot type. So first, if slot dot slot type. OK, so we need to pass in slot because we don't have access to it in this function. So we, let's go back here and pass in slot. Let's update the parameter of the function slot class. So if slot dot slot type is equal to, let's do shirt first, dot shirt. Then we return holding item category is equal to shirt. So if the holding item category is shirt, then we'll return true. Yes, we can put this holding item into the slot. If not, then we can't. And let's do the same thing for pants and shoes. If it's neither shirt, pants, or shoes, then let's just return true. It's just a normal slot. It's an inventory slot or a hotbar slot, and we can put anything in there. OK, now we fully implemented this helper function. So we called it in this function. Let's call it here as well. If able to put into slot, pass in the slot. And let's indent the rest of this. Let's call it here as well. And we don't have to put it in not holding because we're not holding any item to put into the slot anyways. Let's try playing this. Now we take out, oh, we got an error. Let's stop the program. Oh, OK, so it's not supposed to be capitalized slot type. It's just slot type. Yeah, hopefully that's it. Let's click play. Let's try again. All right, great. Let's try putting a sword into our shirt. So it blocks it. So we can't really click into it. We can't click into our pants or our shoes. Let's try to put our shirt into the pants or our boots. We can't. But we can put it into our shirt equip. Same with the pants. And yeah, that's that looks good. Thanks for watching and take care.